Hey, my name's Nat. Welcome to this special episode of Newsbreak celebrating World Space Week. I'm here at Lot 14 in Adelaide, which is also the home of the Australian Space Agency. And inside that building, right there, there's a big announcement about to take place. <gasps> so many people. <laughs> Also here for the announcement is Tanya Plibersek, who's the Federal Minister for Environment and Water, and hopefully she can tell me what's going on. Well, we're opening this new space weather centre today. Its aim is to predict big weather events caused by explosions on the sun's surface. Why is it important that we uh, we care about space? Space is a it's a very exciting final frontier. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, I've never been there, yeah. so... <laughs> Have you been to space? No, okay. I haven't. Not yet. What we learn about in space really helps us on the surface of Earth. For things like predicting long-term weather, what are we going to... What crops are we going to plant? Is it going to be a dry season next year? Is it going to be a wetter season next year? And should kids be excited about space? Is it an industry that they might be able to work in one day? A absolutely. I right. think that's one of the most exciting things. There's so much opportunity uh, in space jobs. Wow. Well, the weather's looking pretty good in space about now, I hear. <laughs> that was a very bad... It's looking, that was it's looking pretty unpredictable. It was meant to be a pun, but it didn't really work. Great to meet you too. I still am not 100% sure on what space weather's supposed to be, but I think Kale's around here somewhere and it might be he can tell us. Kale? Kale? Nat? Nat? <sighs> no, anyway, sorry. He's over there. Kate! I'm here with Kate from the Bureau of Meteorology. Can you tell me, at the moment, space weather, I'm thinking me floating around with an umbrella in space because it's raining. Is that right? What's space weather? So that, that is not quite what space weather is. So space weather begins on the sun. So the sun is a big bowl of hot gas and every now and then it gets a little bit angry and it can spit things out at us and impact us here on Earth. Yep. Technology we use every day, like satellites and GPS for our phones and cars, can be affected by the radiation spitting out from the sun. And in the case of a big solar space storm, they could stop working. So we're here in the Australian Space Weather Forecasting Centre and we've got a space weather forecaster watching the sun at the moment, uh, Andrew Jackling here. <laughs> This is Australia's first ever dedicated space forecasting centre, where experts will look at different images of the sun and the different types of radiation coming from it. From there, they'll put together space weather forecasts. And if there's going to be a big space storm, well, then they can put out a warning to make sure our technology isn't affected. For example, with the satellites, they're allowed, they're able to put them into a bit of a sleep mode. Um, if you had astronauts in space and they got told there was going to be a space weather event, well, they definitely wouldn't be doing a spacewalk. You got something there? Nah, I gotcha. In some other big space news today, SpaceX's historic Crew-5 mission has launched and is headed to the International Space Station. Three, three, four. The mission is being led by astronaut Nicole Mann, the first Indigenous woman to be sent into orbit by NASA. We just heard that the vehicle's now travelling faster than the speed of sound. The journey to the ISS will take around 29 hours, but they'll have a pretty good view on the way. Look at that. We've heard a lot about what government agencies are doing in space, but Aussie businesses are doing some pretty interesting things too. I'm at the Startup Hub in Lot 14 to meet a young Aussie who started up his own business to do with space. Tell me, what have you been working on here? So this just here is what's called a CubeSat, which is a 10 centimetre cube shaped satellite. There's currently thousands of these in space doing a bunch of different jobs. It's the same thing that traditional bus sized satellites do, but on a much smaller scale due to advancements in technology. This particular satellite is a product that I'm developing. It's basically a educational satellite. So this one doesn't go to space, but it's designed to look, feel, function and assemble just like a real satellite that would go to space. The idea behind that is that we can put those into classrooms across all of Australia to kind of educate students on space technology and CubeSats and career opportunities and inspire them to start considering a career in our rapidly growing space industry. Well, that's all from us today. Happy Space Week. We'll see you tomorrow.